What's up, everybody? Quick video on patches and logic. I've got a blank logic session open here. And if I create a new software instrument with the library open, most of us are used to this, uh, obviously. Um, if I want a particular instrument, I'll go through the library and um, select what I want. Say I grab a bass, and um, let's say I make some changes to the instrument itself. Maybe I make some changes to the amp uh, or the amp sound or you know something along those lines, and I get everything dialed in exactly how I want it. Um, if I save it as a patch, then I'm able to really quickly pull that up um, in any session that I'm working on. So once I've made all of the settings that, um, that I want to keep, including um, routing, then I come to the library, click Save, name the patch, decide where I want that to be saved, and I'm good to go. So um, I can give you an example here. Um, once I've saved a patch, that patch will then show up under user patches. And they'll just all be listed right here. Let me open up Finder and we'll take a look at where these patches are stored. We will go to uh, music, audio music apps and halfway or so down patches right here um, there are several subfolders for each track type now I've been talking about instrument track type but you can have patches um, for audio tracks auxiliary tracks master tracks etc I have um, some different patches for auxes that I might use but in particular I really use this with instruments a lot so I have created several subfolders and underneath each of those I have several patches um, saved that I can call up at any time really quick helpful feature you know if I want a fiddle sound I can pull up my fiddle and you know this is a contact instrument but it's kind of a good example because you know so many of us look to see what we can do to have our in individual or third party contact instruments show up in the library browser in contact with patches and logic um, you know it, it, it's almost not even necessary everything is accessible within the logic library um, it really makes for a, a great workflow so let's just walk through the process one time. Let's say I take a logic instrument like a piano, and we'll just do grand piano and pad, and um, say I don't want any um, sends, and uh, maybe I want um, a different compressor, and maybe I have particular um, EQ settings that I like. And um, let's see, maybe there will be um, a, a dedicated output, and then maybe even, let's say, like stereo panning, something like that. Okay, so all the way down, some very custom um, settings that I have on this piano now. Um, I almost changed the input, but I realized that this is a track stack with grand piano and pad, and these are both being routed to um, bus one here. So, um, anyway, let me not get down uh, the rabbit hole with that. So I hit save, and um, and if I hit grand piano patch save, then that's just going to show up right here under my user patches. Um, so if I am using this bass and then I want to go to grand piano and pad, 
it pulls it back up it has my stereo panning the output um, it has the platinum compressor and it's even got my EQ settings all saved um, exactly how I wanted it um, so there you go uh, really cool feature in logic super easy to use um, hope you enjoyed the video thanks a lot